In this video, I'm gonna go over Safe Reactor, which is Alcatraz tech on fusion rewards for Nuclear Tech Mod Extended 1.12.2. It uses antimatter and anti sherbidium along with a singularity, and it generates its own coolant. I'm gonna go over everything it can do and how it works. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's start with dimensions as this is a pretty big reactor. So on its base, this reactor will take an area of 19 by 19 blocks and it is 13 blocks high in total. A lot of different blocks go into making this reactor, so let's go over. If you are making this in survival, then you will need the structure marker. Right clicking it multiple times will display the holographic image of the entire reactor and different blocks as shown here will go into their respective places. So one of the most important blocks for this reactor will be the superconducting magnetic hull, which will be made using titanium plates, the superconducting coil and neodymium coil. Another important one will be the structural support made with tungsten ingots and neutron reflectors. You will need a lot of these, both of these blocks basically. Next for infinite coolant, we will need the coolant radiator made with ferric sherbidate and coldness distribution unit and the transparent window like structure which is the regenerative coolant tank which will be made using CMB plates and glass. Now with the structural support, you can make the excess hatches, a total of four of them in the assembly machine. And then for the main final structure, we will need the reactor itself, a single one, and also 10 matrix blocks. So as you can see in the middle, we have the reactor surrounded on the top and the bottom with matrix. So here's the crafting recipe for the reactor itself. It's a decently like expensive thing to make. And then we have five on the top, five on the bottom, the matrix. And this is the crafting recipe for the matrix. Both of these will require a meteorite block. So if in survival, as I told you, you will start placing blocks like this, but most probably you are going to make this in creative first. So for that, we will need the structure wall. Come one block up from the ground and right click in order to make this entire structure in just one go. And once completed, it's start going to look something like this. So let's go over its GUI first. In order to make this one run, we need antimatter and anti sherbidium Both of these will be stored in magnetic storage tanks. Here goes the singularity and on the top you can see the level of the singularity that you are using. It will generate its own coolant and as soon as it is out of coolant, it will stop running. And here is the 1 tera HE buffer for internal power. So for the singularities, there are five options. Normal singularity, counter resonant singularity, superheated singularity, black hole, and finally the quasar. So all of these will actually require particle accelerator. And even the fuel for this one, which is antimatter and anti sherbidium will require particle accelerator. So particle accelerator is actually pretty important. And here's where the structure wand comes to like very handy especially for new players because using the structure wand now you can make the particle accelerator in just a single click and for new players they can make this and then they can dis disassemble basically the entire accelerator to see how it's made how the corners are done so once you have a particle accelerator which is strong enough to make all of these things then you can start with the tiny singularity capsule which is the very first thing that you will make placing the singularity in here and now we can start filling this up with antimatter and anti shear video. So for this, remember that you need the magnetic or the heavy magnetic storage tanks. The normal tanks will explode. And uh, yeah, each core or basically each singularity has its own consumption rate. By hovering over the singularity, you can see what is the consumption rate. And according to that, you can plan your entire set. So here we have fuel and the singularity in and now we are ready to start this reactor so by toggling this reactor from this button right here first coolant will generate the coolant tank will become full and as soon as it is full the reactor will start running now for the tiny singularity or basically the normal singularity it will run for 32 seconds and then it will have a downtime of four seconds where the coolant will once again fill up inside all of the tanks so here as you can see we are out of coolant now the reactor will shut down, it will once again fill up with coolant and as soon as it is full, the reactor will start again and we are storing power in our internal buffer. So you can get power out from any of the two remaining excess hatches. And here I am going to use an FENSU to store all of this power. So each of the different singularity has different consumption rates as I told you and they also produce different amounts of power which can be seen using basically by hovering over these so that is how basically this reactor is going to run 
but uh, it can also breed these singularities so as you can see very first thing we will craft is a tiny singularity but as it keeps on running inside this reactor it will convert into a normal singularity this normal singularity can then be used to craft a counter resonant singularity and uh, this counter resonant singularity then will be breeded once again in this reactor then combining with a tachyon capsule you can form a superheated the yes superheated resonating singularity and basically this is the process that you will follow until you reach the last step which is forming or crafting the final stage of quasar the tiny singularities have less power output when they are fully breeded the power output gets multiplied by 10 times but the uptime and downtime it remains same and the fuel consumption it also remains same so as you can see now a tiny singularity has been converted to normal singularity and its power the generation is 40 instead of 4 so 10 times power multiplication and this applies to every singularity there is. another very interesting thing that this can do is not only breed singularities but also breed a meteor sword so basically the stage between baleful which was crafted using the fusion reactor and the demonic which uses dfc there is one which is warped and this is exclusive to the 1.12.2 version only so using the baleful sword you can place it inside this reactor to convert it into the second stage but this only works if the reactor is running so right now the reactor is in downtime and if i place the sword here then this won't work but as soon as the reactor will start running again and if i place this in a running reactor then you can see our sword has been converted into the warped version and now inside a dfc or basically a tungsten crate this can be converted into the demonic version so that is how this is also used for the meteorite sword progression but using this reactor has like its dangers as the internal area of this reactor is completely empty you can drop something in here or a mob can fall in here and once this reactor starts running and if there are mobs in there yes they are gonna get hurt not an enjoyable time for them so basically don't drop anything once you have made this reactor inside otherwise it's difficult to get them out now it goes without saying that dropping any of the singularities even if it is a tiny one is dangerous the tiny singularities do disappear after a time with the exception of black hole but yeah don't drop this otherwise it's gonna take out a big part of your base so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this let me know in the comment section what you thought of this video and any ideas for future videos peace out stay safe